Today, I have a riddle for you. Are you ready? What goes up, 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 but never seems to grow is big and bold and very, very old. No, it's not a balloon. It's not an aeroplane. It's not an elephant. Let me give you another hint. It can reach up to the sky, high above the clouds. It sometimes can have snow on the top and tourists like to climb to the top. You got it! It's a mountain! And today we're going to make a mountain of our show. We're going to find out about some of Africa's most famous mountains. Find out how mountains are formed, how they can impact the lives of humans, and then we're going to visit our furry friends our distant cousins who live on the fertile slopes of the volcanic mountains of East Africa. Yes, that's right! Mountain gorillas. Okay, are you ready for a mountainous adventure? Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! We're learning every day. Have you ever wondered how mountains are formed or what mountains are made of? Mountains are made of what we are standing on right now. I mean the crust of the Earth, the outer layer of the planet Earth. Crust of the Earth? That's making me hungry. It's making me think of a nice, warm, crusty loaf of bread. Well, something like that. The crust of the bread goes all around the outside, forming an outer layer. Or let's look at my egg here. The eggshell goes all around the egg, forming an outer layer. So now let's look at the structure of our planet. The outer layer of the planet Earth is called the crust, and it's the hard, rocky surface that we live on. It covers the entire Earth, forming all the features on the surface like mountains and rivers and valleys and lakes and forests and deserts and vegetations. And it even makes the deep, deep at the bottom of the sea. It's the outer layer of a planet like the shell of an egg or the crust of the bread. Planet Earth is actually made of four distinct layers, the inner core, the outer core, the mantle, and the crust. Each layer has different thicknesses and is composed of different materials. Let's talk about the crust, though. Unlike the bread's crust, the Earth's crust is not one piece. Look, if I smash my head, it breaks into pieces. The Earth's crust is like that too. It's broken into big pieces called plates that house the continents. There are seven main tectonic plates that cover the Earth and then some microplates of varying sizes. These tectonic plates are huge, heavy and constantly moving but very, very, very slowly. They move by about 1 to 10 centimeters a year. Over long periods of time, the movement of these plates result in big changes on the Earth's crust. Mountains are mostly formed because of this movement of these tectonic plates. So, for example, I'm going to explain how the most common mountain called a fold mountain occurs. Sometimes two of the plates of the Earth crust push against each other 
and with nowhere to go, they push and push and push and push and push until eventually it buckles and the crust that is pushed upwards becomes what we call a fold mountain. This is the most common mountain type formed over millions of years. The more they press against each other, the more they rise. Sometimes not just one mountain pops up, but a whole range like the Atlas Mountain in Morocco. If I get this piece of paper and push the ends together, it creates an upward fold in the paper. This is similar to how a fold mountain is formed. A block mountain, however, occurs when cracks, faults, form in the crust, when it's being stretched and most likely in the widening rift to produce what we call a block mountain. Renzori Mountains in Uganda are a good example of this. They were formed three million years ago and are uplifted blocks of much older crust. Table Mountain in Cape Town is also like this. Volcanoes and dome mountains are formed by hot molten rock from the Earth's center, pushing their way up towards the crust. The highest mountain in Africa is in Tanzania on the border with Kenya, and it is called Kilimanjaro. It's a very large stratovolcano which formed during the formation of the Rift Valley due to a very thin wick spot in the Earth's surface, allowing for magma to come to the surface from the Earth's mantle. It became a volcano with three craters, but only one is active today. For your home learning, observe mountains or hills in your area. Have a think, what type of mountains are they? Inquire and discover. <laughs> Washing hands with soap kills germs. We hear that all the time. But how does that really work? Germs are too small for us to see them with our eyes. I will show you how it works. Rub some Vaseline or oil on your hands. Now, let's pretend for a second. Those spices are germs. Rub germs all over your hands. Now, wash your hands with water only. Are the germs off? No, they're still there. Now, let's wash our hands with soap. 20 seconds, remember? Look, success! The germs have disappeared. Wash your hands with soap regularly to keep the germs away. Protect yourself and your family. It's technology. Here we are in Rwanda in Volcanoes National Park and we're going on a hike to visit mountain gorillas. Can we not just visit them in the zoo? There are no mountain gorillas found in zoos anywhere in the world. When they have been put in zoos, they died of depression. They are also a very rare species. There are only 1,000 left in the wild. So we are very lucky to be able to meet them here in their natural habitat. Gorillas are so closely related to us humans. They share 98% of our DNA, which is the carrier of genetic information. They look like us, live in families like us, and we can even share their illnesses. Gorillas are highly intelligent and often display emotions similar to our own human experience. Shh, look through there. Oh, they are playing just like children. And look, look there. There are the mothers keeping a beady eye on everything. Oh my goodness, who is that? I am a silverback. This is my family that you are looking at. I'm the head of this troop. That is what a family of gorillas is called. And why are you called silverback? Can't you see these silver hairs on my back? 
Yes, it's beautiful. Have you always had that? When I was younger, it was black. But as I got older, the hair turned into this beautiful silver color. The same thing happened to my dad's hair. All mountain gorillas are very hairy. It helps keep us warm in the mountains. I am a little scared of you. No, no, no. You don't need to be scared of us. We're peaceful, gentle, social animals. Gorillas are herbivores. That means we feed on plants. But I do enjoy munching on some insects and worms too. I spend much of my day chewing and nibbling things. During the day, we move around in search for food. And at night, we build nests to sleep in. I bend branches and make a nice comfy bed. Mummy gorillas snuggle up close with their babies. I make my bed every morning, not every night. Sounds like a nice life though. It is mostly. But mountain gorillas are endangered species. There are lots of threats to our survival. Hunters come into the forest looking to kill animals for meat. They don't want to eat us, but it is hard to see the traps and snares they put down. We get trapped in them, and then we can die. Oh no! That's terrible! But why do people lay snares? Many people who live near the forest may not have enough food, or that has been the way of life for them for many generations. What can we do to help? I think we could tell people about mountain gorillas and the important forests they live in and how hard it is for people who also live near them. Let's support the work of organizations and local people helping the gorillas. Wow, what magnificent animals. Yes. But we need to leave the gorillas in peace now. Our time is up. They need some human free time. Bye. Hey, do you know that exercise changes the brain? in a way that protect memory and thinking skills. So, let's get started. Jumping jacks, are you ready? Let's go. We start. Can we try to do it again? Yeah, can we try to do it again? Okay, here we go. Good, thank you. Nice work, everyone. Remember to get some exercise every day. Just spectacular. And so cold. I can hardly breathe. That's because we are so high up. We're at the top of a beautiful volcano called Mount Nyiragongo in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Wow. Look at the red hot bubbling lava lake. It's amazing. You don't want to fall in that lake. Let me step back a little. That's coming from deep inside the earth, from the mantle, the earth's middle layer. It's actually rock that is so hot, it has become a liquid called magma. Nyiragongo is actually the most voluminous lava lake in the world. From inside the earth? Wow, why is that happening? Usually, magma is found underneath the Earth's surface in the Earth's mantle. However, sometimes the tectonic plates move on the Earth's surface, which makes the pressure in the mantle build up so much that it forces magma to rise to the surface of the Earth. 
as it pushes for the surface, it finds weak spots in the earth and then explodes out as a dangerous volcanic eruption. Then, hot lava flows down the mountain, leaving huge hazardous ash deposits. Wow, that's crazy. So why is it bubbling now? That bubbling liquid, lake of molten lava, tells us that this is an active volcano. The volcanic activity on this mountain is always going on. But at the moment, it's only happening inside the crater. Some volcanoes are dormant. That means they will never erupt again. What? You mean it could erupt now? The last time it erupted was 2002, so that's nearly 20 years ago. On average, it erupts every 30 years. Phew, we have another 10 years to go. The last time it erupted, there were good warning systems. So 400,000 people living down in Goma managed to escape and evacuate. Yet sadly, 245 people still lost their lives. And Goma town changed again forever. There we can see Mama Flora. She's remembering what happened. Eh, it must be nearly 20 years ago now. January 2002, a few months before there had been an earthquake. Then one late afternoon, there was a really bad smell in the air. I now know that this was something called sulfur. The earth started shaking and the mountain started roaring. There was an enormous bang. I looked up at the volcano and saw flames rising. I knew we had to get away as soon as we could. It was becoming hard to breathe. Oh, we all started coughing. <coughs> the lava started to pour like rivers of fire coming from the mountain. We managed to escape, yet we left everything. We lost all our possessions. The lava covered a fifth of the city. After a few months, we came back and started to rebuild our city. There's still lava everywhere. But it has cooled now, so it looks like hard rivers of rock in streets. Wow, what a story. I can't believe how many people are living there when it's so dangerous. Yes, volcanoes erupting are very scary and dangerous. It's the gases that can kill, as well as the rocks flying through the air and the lava being ejected. But the volcanic soils are the most fertile and agriculture thrives. It's amazing how active our planet is and how humans and nature can coexist and occasionally clash. I now see there are both positives and negatives of living near a volcano. Look at the volcano I made. Would you like to make one too? Start out with a plastic bottle, a box, cardboard bits and strips of paper, water, glue and tape. Make a base for the volcano using the box and stick the bottle in place. Crumple up some paper and make the rugged form of a volcano around the bottle. Use tape to hold the crumpled papers in place. Soak the strips of paper in some water mixed with glue and paste over the shape, further defining the volcano. Leave it to dry and once it's dry, paint it. Now let's make our homemade volcano erupt like a real volcano. To make the lava mimic, that of a real volcano, you will need four tablespoons of bicarbonate soda, red and yellow food color, and one cup of vinegar. Using my funnel, I will put the bicarbonate soda and then pour in the vinegar mixed with the fiery red food coloring. You have to be super quick to pull the funnel out. <gasps> whoa, whoa, the fizzing and frothing is the bicarbonate reacting with the vinegar so it looks like a dangerous erupting volcano. Vitamins and minerals are substances that are found in food we eat. Your body needs them to work properly so you can grow and develop just like you should. Bacteria, fungi and plants produce their own vitamins. Our bodies can't. So we need to get them from other sources. 
Each vitamin or mineral has a special role to play. Vitamin C helps your body resist from infection. You can't always avoid getting sick, but vitamin C makes it a little harder for your body to become infected with an illness. It also helps heal wounds when you get a cut, for example. You can find vitamin C in citrus fruits like oranges and lemons, guava, pineapple, papaya, tomatoes, cabbage and broccoli. Eat plenty of those foods to see how healthy you'll be. Did you know Africa is splitting in two and it is happening here in Kenya? I have evidence. My name is Michelle and I am a teacher here in Kenya. There is a huge crack that suddenly appeared in the earth here in Kenya at a place called Narok a few years ago. Scientists say this happened because the African plate that originally pulled apart to form the Great Rift Valley, which you can also see here in Kenya, is continuing to pull apart and that is why Africa is literally cracking up. This pulling apart will keep pulling apart for a long time until eventually it won't just be a big crack in the earth, but the entire continent of Africa will literally break into two pieces. This will form two new tectonic plates. The one making up most of Africa will be called the Nubian plate. The smaller one pulling away will be called the Somalia plate. A whole new ocean will be formed between the Nubian plate and the Somalian plate. And this new ocean will be a small and shallow sea. Ethiopia, Somalia and Tanzania will stop being part of mainland Africa and will form a new island floating in this new sea. I wonder what this ocean will be called. Any suggestion? Can you think of a name for this new future ocean? What about the new future island? Can we come up with a name for that too? I hope you can come to Kenya one day, visit the Great Rift Valley and go to Narok and see Africa cracking up. But don't worry, our continent and my beautiful country Kenya is not going to totally separate in our lifetime. This process takes millions of years and who knows what the world will be like by then. Maybe there'll no longer be humans left to see. Are you a teacher? Do you want to be part of our show? The Africa Teacher Challenge is on. Record a two minute video lesson on a subject you are passionate about. Upload it on YouTube and send us the link on ngntvafrica at gmail.com. If we use your video in our show, you will receive 150 US dollars. Let's go. It's time for a brain booster. What do mountain gorillas and humans have in common? Gorillas can show emotions just like people. Both species live in families. Gorillas and humans share illnesses, all of the above. It is all of the above. Sharing 98% of our DNA, gorillas are very closely related to humans. What is the upside of living near a volcano? The volcanic soils are extremely fertile, which results in a higher crop yield for farmers. Mountains are formed because of the movement of the tectonic plates, the continents, the Earth's outer core. Mountains are formed because of the movement of the seven tectonic plates that the Earth's crust is broken into. Great job! Wow, that was a mountain of learning we did. Now you are a real mountain expert. 
Remember to find out what mountains are near you, learn how they're formed, and even better, try going on a hike up one. There's a mountain waiting just for you. See you next time. Bye.